chance to talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch, you <laughs> filthy! Welcome to Flyover State of Fear. I have, a, we're in a new setting this time. First time actually having an in-person guest on any sort of Flyover podcast. I have Evan Scarada, my good buddy. Hello. Uh, and we're going to discuss The Shining today. But first, Evan, how you doing? Not too bad. Good. It's been pretty good so far. Um, yeah, so I asked Evan to be on. Uh, he's really into horror. And uh, so I want to know, like, what got you into, like, horror movies? Do you like horror movies, I guess I should say? Uh, and just tell us a little about your interests yes. in the genre. So, currently I love horror movies. Um, probably one of my favorite types of movies to watch at this point, I would yeah. say. Um, back in the day, though, I hated horror movies. I was very... Oh, me too. Yeah, very yeah. scared. Um, actually, The Shining was probably one of the first ones that I saw when I was like eight or nine, which is probably not the best thing, and it scarred me for life. You know, it's so funny because... You have that story, and my brother literally has the same, like, my dad showed him The Shining when he was, like, seven. I think I kind of remember him watching around it, but I was, like, still a lot younger. Yeah. Uh, and then I've heard that from other people, so it's, it's right up there. I actually ran a Twitter poll to be like, who out there? And it didn't go the way I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It was, like, 35% people were like, an adult showed me, or my dad showed yeah. me, and the rest were like, leave me alone. Yeah. Well, I know you know the story, but basically... Um, we were at my dad's house, and he was letting my sister, um, watch it, and he told me to stay in the other room because it was too scary, which I obviously did not follow, um, and I just kept sneaking back and forth, and I would see little things, and eventually he was just like, alright, just watch it, like, you're already in here, and it scarred me for a <laughs> long time, so that was probably for the best. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I, so I mean, yeah, um... Do you like movies like The Shining, typically? Like, very, like, slow burns, cerebral, creepy? Yes. Okay. I like a good, like, psychological mindfuck kind of thing. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, whatever, whatever you fucking want. <laughs> um, yeah, I like a good mindfuck a lot. Um, something that makes me, like, actually think a lot, but, like... Like, we watch, um, our shitty movies on Wednesdays. Like, I like a nice, goofy, horror, like... Horror movie that has a lot of fun kills, like this. Oh, the best. Yeah. that's why horror is so good because there's like so many subgenres of yeah. it that you can get everything from and, and different that, movies. And that's why I kind of want to start the the show. Like I said, Evan's my first guest. That's not a flyover person. Uh, in the second recording of this, and it's because you can get such a wide variety with horror. You could, we could, you know, someone's going to come on hopefully one day and do our comedy, or mm -hmm. you know. A lot of them are family dramas. I mean, this could be a family drama. So anyway, The Shining, uh, we're, we're just going to have a conversation here today about it. And uh, this is not a review. I mean, what else is there to review about something like The Shining, right? We're not adding any insight in that regard. <laughs> um, so uh, just a little background. Uh, plot is very basic. I mean, I went... Usually when you go to the Wikipedia of these, there's like, here's the plot description. There's mm -hmm. paragraphs, paragraphs, paragraphs. This was the shortest plot description I've ever seen. It was... Really? Yeah, it was like three paragraphs. It details what happens in the movie. Uh-huh. But you've gone to like Wikipedia before where yeah. they... I was surprised, but... It plot makes of sense, though. By the way, spoilers, all this stuff to me, every one of these episodes. The plot of The Shining is Jack Torrance, played by Jack Nicholson... Uh, is a writer, and he takes a job in a secluded hotel to take that closes down from October 30th, uh, on October 30th to, uh, like the spring, I like, believe, like May, to take care of the hotel during the winter. And slowly but surely, he, he brings his wife and his kid, and he goes insane, 
the kid at the same time is experiencing what we learn is the shining a paranormal uh kind of telepathy visions and all this stuff uh it's a stephen king book famously stephen king hates this movie uh it's been discussed a lot did you did you know that i did yeah. actually so yeah so that's kind of the background uh stanley cooper directed 1980 and before we get in the conversation, just run some things. $19 million budget. I mean, every dollar is on screen. Gross $47 million, which it was a top 10 hit, but it wasn't. I was really surprised to see it and it always baffles me. It had mixed reviews to almost negative when it mm -hmm. first came out. So it really shows, like, reviews don't mean anything. I feel anything like a lot of, like, older horror way. movies are like that. Where, like, when they first came out, like, I was listening, not horror, but, like, I was listening to a podcast about The Fifth Element. And that did terrible. Yeah, and that's when it a first came brilliant out. movie. And it's like a cult favorite now. So I yeah. feel like I think The Shining got that, uh, and it's the quintessential, as you said, it's the quintessential like dad horror movie mm -hmm. too. And it's become like everyone loves The Shining. Yeah. Other like I have a lot of fun facts and stuff written down, but the other one about its reception is it was nominated in the first ever Razzie Awards for Worst Director really? and Worst Actress. When I'd say the direction and the actress are the two shining stars in this movie. I, I was going to say, Shelley Duvall kills it. I, it's, 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 I'll just get right into it. It sucks, too, because you know about Shelley Duvall and literally, like, this movie almost ruined her life mm -hmm. mentally. And, like, fuck Stephen Kubrick for doing that. Yeah. It's, but we got a really good movie out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not worth it. Just put it out there. But that's, like, you know, become in recent years the story around The Shining. Um, that, I mean, I think she holds the record. They have the record for most takes. It's, like, 127 takes for, like, I think her screams. She literally started losing her. It's terrible. But she's amazing in yeah, it. And she's fantastic. Probably the most scared woman on film ever mm -hmm. put. And that's because she probably is the most scared woman yeah. ever on film. It probably wasn't. Like, an act at some point, it probably, like, she's probably visibly disturbed. Yeah. So, tell me, like, uh, so I'll just go through it. Um, so, like, what really gets you about this movie? Because it's funny. I, when I was this watch, um, a lot of new things stood out to me that I haven't noticed. And I'd say I probably visited once a year, maybe once every two years, you know, during yeah. a Halloween watch. I haven't watched it in a couple years, and like you said... Um, rewatching it, one, I didn't, I forgot how fit long it was, but it's the shortest long movie I've ever seen. It flies by. Um, but, so the main things that really stick with me, uh, to the, the twins, um, those cemented a lifelong fear of little girls in horror movies okay. for me. Because you were telling me before, you were like, yeah. Kids in horror movies. And yeah. my question, I literally wrote down, do you find, like, Danny creepy? Yes, a thousand percent. You do? Okay. His fucking red rod. Uh, yeah, the horrifying. It's crazy. He said, like, do, doing some reason. Like, he came up with that. He said, oh, pretend to have an imaginary friend. Really? And he was the one being, like, That's even fear. scarier. And the little kid didn't know he was in a horror movie. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, most little kids, girls especially, like, The Ring, Samara's horrifying. Don't even get me started on that, but... <laughs> Laura... My wife, my wife is uh has agreed to one day really? rewatch The Ring, which is why she doesn't watch horror movies, and then come on this show. So, oh yeah, Samara, terrifying. The twins. So when I saw it as a kid, right, I, I don't think it was as young as you, but when I it wasn't the twin girls, it was the naked old lady yes. scene. Because the thing was probably like, ooh, pretty lady, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was just like warts and this this hag following that? you. So effects were incredible. Like I was like kind of nauseous watching that just because of like, like the other yesterday when I watched it, just the makeup and everything. Like it looked pretty real. And like oh, the it's... laugh, it the cackle is horrifying. So uh, we're gonna. By the way, I'm gonna jump around everywhere. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, just for the list. So her herself, I think I realized that this watch, and maybe I just don't pay attention enough to some movies. Was that supposed to be? Um, uh, the old caretaker's, like, wife that he murdered. That's what I always assume. Yeah, because the only, the only other dead people you see, or that interaction you see are the two girls who are yeah. clearly the daughters. And him in the bathroom. Yeah. Dropping hard R's. I forgot that that was in there, too. Well, that's what I wrote in here is, like, 
I mean, because, like, there's a lot of themes in this movie, but they're pretty straightforward, right? It's about mm-hmm. writers, it's about Stephen King's writer's block and about his alcoholism. Yeah. Four and foremost in isolation, which I'm sure during the pandy, Everybody. a lot of, someone experienced yeah. this, but, well, us. but, um, the, I was like, there's a lot of, like, race tones on this. I feel like. Uh, so with that scene in particular, because I feel like so that's a guy from the 1920s talking to yeah to Jack a, Nich- a guy yeah. in the late 70s 80s yeah so definitely he would view like the 1920s old caretaker would view that as a normal scene, mm-hmm. but I think Horrors. since yeah since like Jack Nicholson was technically like there in the past at like the end of the movie. He would see that as a normal C thing as well. But... Maybe. Um, it it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I I I got that. Oh, I for, I forgot about this. Oh, I scene. did too. They said it, and I like kind of like had to do a double take because I was and like, it, I it says it like back that. and forth, and mm-hmm. it, it's I mean it's clearly layered in the thing about like race and that because it's like Wendy and Danny and even Jack are so accepting of uh, the caretaker at first mm-hmm. of uh, Doc. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know. A lot of things that really, you know, shot, like, realizing this watch to it is, um, uh, sorry, I'm losing, is, uh, the, the, the pacing of this movie is so clean. Mm-hmm. And, like you said, it doesn't get bloated. Yeah, it doesn't feel rushed, um. I did forget how quickly he starts to go crazy. Like, well, that's what I, I was always like. Oh, it's a slow burn, mm-hmm. and it's not really a slow burn at all. Yeah. It's just a long movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the things I noticed on it. There was some filmmaking stuff from like, wow, in the inch, the beginning and everything. It's very like wide scoped. I don't mm-hmm. know if you noticed that. Like, you're very like everything with yeah. people around. Every like you're showing the grandiose of of the. The hotel and everything, mm-hmm. and then when they're alone, like it gets very isolated. Yeah, you're very yep. close in. I, it probably is to focus you in and try to isolate you as well as the audience. Yeah, um, it's interesting though. Like you bring it up, and I keep bringing it back to this. Like it's a movie from childhood, but it's not for children. Oh, yeah. But like I feel like everyone has that story. Mm-hmm. That was a classic. Ron Scarada shouldn't probably let us watch this, <laughs> but we watched it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's graphic. It's just more chilling. Like like Laura, like um, she had watched this once. Um, when we first started dating because like her friends were watching it or something, and I remember saying, "Oh, isn't that scary?" And she's like, "I didn't really pay attention." Like, "Oh no, this is like." This is a chilling movie because I think it sits with you. Yeah, it's like a lingering fear for sure. Um, and it's, we're talking about the pandemic. I mean, it, it reflective of people in isolation. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, obviously, didn't hopefully murder their families like yeah. that. But um, I don't know. And then, and then at the same time, did did you think that like the, they were like ghosts and they were seeing it? Because there's movies like a lot of vague things in this movie, right? Like, like. I wrote a note this time, like, how did the ending scene, like, did Wendy, like, come into the visions to see, like, all those skeletons, or was that there the whole time and they just didn't see it? I don't know. I've never actually, like, thought about that. I feel like it had to have been, like, ghosts, because I feel like that establishment, they, they would have... her that, yeah. at that time. I don't know, that, there's just things in that. Have you ever, like dealt within um uh like the conspiracy theory have you ever watched that room 237 documentary i actually have not so it's interesting um there's a documentary room 237 and it's literally just about it's more about the people being crazy coming up with conspiracy theories about yeah. this movie than the actual conspiracy theories you just put that there. so like the theories literally are like oh there's like and this one's the most maybe like it's um it's all about like the Indian like a Native American genocide mm-hmm. and stuff like that. The other one's like it's about the moon landing because there's all these things. There's people have literally like, <laughs> molded out models of the hotel that yeah. things don't make sense. It's bad shit. Yeah. So it's worth a watch, but it's it's not a. Have you ever seen somebody made 
the hotel and like scenes out of like Rice Krispie or something. I've seen. I haven't seen that. I've seen the Lego one, and then I'm pretty sure it was Rice Krispies. It was incredible. I was baffled. And then early internet fame is uh is definitely um the the like romantic comedy trailer for The Shining. Oh yeah, that was like early oh, internet yeah, cut incredible. together. To play uh, Salisbury Hill. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's great. It's so good. Uh, another, talking about like The Shining and media, and I know we're jumping around. I'm yeah. rambling. We have plenty of time. I don't know why I'm... <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. I've, I mean, I've also always thought of The Shining as like, uh, you know, it's this great horror movie. Like, people that don't like horror movies like The Shining. Mm -hmm. And for me, until I like put it in my Halloween rotation... I was always more familiar with the Simpsons parody. Yeah. The Shinin. The Shin. So, anyway. Yeah, it's in a lot of, um, just looking stuff, like, quickly before, like, it's in a lot of different things. Like, there's a Finding Nemo reference in it, where Brucey comes in and he goes, here's Brucey, and, yeah. like, there's Family Guy, Simpsons, um. Uh, well, and the Toy Story's big reference, uh, Guy... Uh, the director of Toy Story three name escapes me. He runs a like the shine like a shining like website. Yeah. And the animators in the first movie in Toy Story, the rug, the oh yeah, this rug is in that movie. It's, well, that new movie Mitchell's Horse the Machine, which is phenomenal. Um, the one girl, the main girl, has the socks of the, um, the carpet. Oh, there it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so it's everywhere. Yeah. It's very influential. Uh, and it's funny because Stanley Kubrick, I mean, you know, he's an auteur director and, and he said he tortured Charlie Duvall, which is terrible. Uh, but this is coming off of like his biggest considered flop, which people love, Barry mm -hmm. Lyndon. And then like, I mean, this is the guy that, you know, made 2001 A Space Odyssey. And then he makes this meticulous horror movie, uh, that it's, it's a cold calculated horror movie yeah and i think that's what stephen king didn't like about this movie mm -hmm. um and he's still to this day I, I honestly think it's a bit now um i don't know if you've ever seen the miniseries that stephen king like produced about this i don't think so i don't it's fucking <laughs> terrible it's it's literally like a three or four part so essentially four hour mm -hmm. shining movie and uh you know it but it's to the book and it's just not good. Yeah, because I feel like we're so used to this now that even by the book seems off. Hmm. What well, do you think? Like, uh, so do you know what the ending was? Was supposed to be in the book? I, I'm pretty sure. I it, briefly don't they like burn the house down? That or? does happen, I believe. Because I and I only really know that from Doctor Sleep, which yeah. you guys should watch. Also, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Um. No, it's uh the instead of the hedge maze. I mean, lost in it. The it's um like hedge animals, and they come to life. Yes. Okay. In the miniseries, it doesn't work. They kind of had the CGI at the time. I just I don't know. It's, it's goofy, right? Anyway, um, yeah. I don't know. The, it, one thing that's always stood out to me of this movie, and I feel like I'm just taking away all of your talking <laughs> points, um, is uh. Is this the, the the sound? This movie doesn't work without like not just the score but the sound mixing. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the scariest part of this movie is just the noise of that winter wind whipping oh, in yeah. every scene. I can't tell you enough of just. A... Yeah, it's creepy because like you'll be in your room at night and you'll hear it, and like in real life, it's just a scary, it, creepy noise. It reminds me of, like, being up. This movie reminds me of being up at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning during a snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have the window open a little bit to see the snow. Yep. But you're like, there's nothing out yeah. there. It's just the whole, like... I do this constantly when it snows. But, like, if you just lie there and let the snow hit you, like... It's very calming, but it's also, like, this creepy... Or, like, quiet. Like, it's just pure nothing. And, like, just being in a hotel like that... Do you, um, yeah, it's very creepy. What, so I have my answer, but I'll let you, what's the, like, the most heartbreaking moment of this movie? There's one. There's only one heartbreaking moment. Um, At least in my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's always been upsetting. I don't, I feel like, 
when he starts chasing down, in, in my opinion, when he starts chasing Danny, like, into the maze, oh, like, he's, no. he's, try, he's about to kill his own little son. Yeah, I get that. I mean, like, they're gone. I, I'm not worried about them. It's, but, it's Scatman Crothers getting the axe. That was my other one. That right always, always, I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, he didn't need You could have did more to live. That's another thing. I think in the book, he survives that. He does. He does. Um, dude, it, it's it's it, hard to talk about because I think it's one of the best horror movies ever made. Yeah. Um, like, you can have your quibble, like, quabbles, quibbles, whatever the word is, but, like, it's it's phenomenal. Um, it, like you mentioned with sounds, like, it's scored so well. True. I mean, most of my notes are about the score. Yeah. And even... Um, when, like I said, I was watching, obviously, we were talking about it today, watching a little more analytical uh, analytical eye than mm -hmm. I normally would. When, um, when Jack, when, I'm sorry, when Danny has to get, like, his fire truck or whatever, and Jack's clearly just going insane, mm -hmm. like, sitting at the foot of the bed, that, like, like, score right there, it almost sounds like a hypnotic circus yeah. act. And instead of, like, you know, this horror, and then it hard cuts. Mm hmm to the next day. Yeah. And that was an interesting thing to me is the the title cards in between, right? Yeah. Cuz we go from the start then like a month later and then it's just a week of descent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um the hard cuts are they it's so well put in. It's not like I don't know, like they don't rush it or anything. But um yeah, that's one of my biggest thing in horror movies are the scores. Like I really pay attention to mu music um one of my favorite, I think my favorite horror movie, Sinister, has oh, a phenomenal has a, score. Yeah. That that scared me more. Like, the score of it is what made it as scary as it was, in my opinion. That's one, yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, it's all the elements coming together, but the score definitely helps, right? Yeah. You're building the atmosphere, uh -huh. and, I mean, you know, Evan came over, like, with me 20 minutes left, and I was, like, in this room just dark, and, like, okay, just gotta shut up, like. We're gonna finish the movie. Uh, he didn't actually talk. I needed to finish the movie, <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's so fresh in my mind. Like it yeah. just, we just finished and recording. Um, yeah, it. It's weird too because I'm always back into this of like this should be in a regular rotation of movies mm -hmm. I watch, right? But it's not. Yeah, and a little bit ago you mentioned of. Oh, you're just like you, like creeped out because of the sounds, and this is why I didn't watch it. I was gonna watch like maybe an hour last night mm -hmm. and finish up today, and I, was oh, like, yeah. I don't feel like starting this at eleven o'clock yeah. at night. Because like it, it starts off very eerie. Like the opening score sets the tone for the movie, and it's very creepy. It's just driving, it's just the yeah. hills driving up. Yep. I mean, and there's so much weird stuff in this. Like, I tried. Excuse me. I tried looking up what that these things mean, and they. Mm -hmm. Like the the bear and the guy the guy oh, yeah. getting head by the bear yeah. costume guy, like it's really quick flash. It's probably one of the weirdest things in the movie. Uh huh. And no one has a definitive answer of like what it means. Yeah, there's like like I think in Stephen King's in the book, it's a dog costume yeah. guy, and it's the owner of the hotel, mm -hmm. and he goes through a few chapters. And the closest thing I could show is. It was just the owner. It was the own, telling you the owner showing dominance. Someone else is right into it, where it could be referential to there was more of a sinister thing going on between Jack and Danny with like the station and stuff like that. I don't tend to think I didn't that yeah, theory that, didn't really catch me too much. That seemed like a real reach. Yeah, I don't like. I he was definitely like abusive. Yeah, I but I don't think once. he was like. Yeah, I don't think he was like sexually. Abusive. No, I don't definitely, think so physically more physical yeah but like you like you said it was only the one time but mm. you could still see him oh it's it's uh yeah i don't know it some of my favorite parts though speaking of that we only touched him once are just the conversations with jack nicholson who could he not be in a better role oh my god phenomenal to, to uh the barkeep to the barkeep yeah. and he's talking like lloyd's been his bartender for well, I guess he has, right? Yeah, well, that's like, what, like, they, they hint at him being there before, like, very early on with I, him talking to, like, everybody knew him. I think, I mean, maybe we watch too much sci-fi. I think he's in a time loop or some yeah. sort of, like... 
I can I agree with that. Like, because what they do in in my first literally know is do the people that hire Jack know that this place is messed up? And then it answers, well, they tell them about it, but they don't really say, like, oh, a lot of stuff has happened there. Yeah. Well, they, they, they kind of do. They're they, like, guy. They mentioned, yeah. The old caretaker murdering his. But, I don't know. It, it's one of those weird movies. Cause, not weird, but story-wise, everything is destined to happen in that hotel, mm-hmm. right? You have uh, Doc and uh, and Danny both having the shinin. The copyright. Shining, copyright, yeah, make sure. <laughs> Both having The Shining, um, you know, and then Jack going there, and he's been the character, like, does mm-hmm. this just happen every... Couple, however many years? Yeah. Like, is like, it just him and the other guy just cycling through caretaking? I don't know, that's a big question, because it truly, en- it ends on that note of the, uh, yeah. of, a. Uh, of, uh, with the photo in the 20s. And, mm-hmm. You know, the, I did read there was an alternate ending. Really? No one's really ever seen, but they know they shot of uh, Wendy and Danny in the hospital and the police kind of being like, we didn't find his body. Mm-hmm. But that wouldn't have worked. Yeah. That would have been... I think him being frozen in the maze was a good ending. For yeah. That. It's so, like, yeah. It's such a, like, a memorable photo, that and the... Cover art. Well, it's in, it, it's interesting to me that, like, this cover, right? Mm-hmm. This is the, what's on virtually every poster, or it's this with uh, Shelley Duvall with a knife in the mm-hmm. side. It's so usually this. The original poster is just, like, uh, someone kind of looking up their eyes down in shock, but, like, a very, like, vectored image in the words The Shining. You've seen really? that. It's, like, yeah. yellow. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because they probably didn't know how to advertise this movie, Mm -hmm. right? And so now this is what you see, right? Yeah. And it's just Jack Nicholson, and I don't need to... I don't need to know what this movie is to know it's a horror movie. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And that's probably one of my favorite scenes in any horror movie. Just, like, I've watched... I've seen clips on YouTube of him, like, practicing, like, getting himself pumped up for that, and, like... It's absurd, like, how crazy he it's, is. It's in the intro of this show. Yeah. Uh, the fun facts about that is, to get angry, uh, Jack Nicholson almost strictly ate just cheese sandwiches because he hated them. <laughs> That's uh, incredible. Yeah, so this movie was made on cheese sandwiches. <laughs> uh, and it took, I believe, I have it down here somewhere, 60 doors to get that yeah. done right. And I mean, Stanley Kubrick was meticulous. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, Jack Nicholson said, I will never work with Stanley Kubrick again after how... Not how he treated uh, Shelley, Shelley Duvall, Duvall, which... That's what? another thing. So a whole other thing is he made uh, Scatman Crothers, who was like 70 at that time, mm-hmm. maybe even older, do like something like 60, 70 takes Jesus. of just like a close-up on his face. Yeah, that's crazy. And he literally broke down and cried and... I guess the the story of Jack Nicholson was like, yeah. never work with you again. They made a great movie. Yeah, that, um, that scene is just so iconic. Like yeah. everybody remembers, remember, remembers like the here's Johnny. But I mean, we were talking about it earlier. Johnny. But the I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your. It's just it, he it delivers it so well. Or even the first door knockdown mm-hmm. of Wendy, I'm home. Yeah. Well, so I read something else that they used fake doors originally, but. They weren't cutting right. Yeah, he. Well, no, he broke them so fast because <laughs> apparently he was like a ex fire marshal or something. Oh, okay. So he would he just destroy the doors way too fast or something like that. That's awesome. But I, yeah, and um, and same thing in that scene alone, and it's, it's the most iconic scene. Let's mm-hmm. be real. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, being from England, didn't know. Here's Johnny was like a Tonight Show reference. Yeah, wasn't so that all him? Like he just improv yeah. it, and it worked in the movie. But it, Stanley Kubrick wanted to cut it because, like, I guess he didn't want any, like, pop culture or yeah, anything. Yeah, it, it works perfectly. But um, a funny thing for that, um, we were talking about it when with my dad and, like, his sister, my aunt. And we were talking about the scene and she, <laughs> she we were quoting it and she goes, yeah, Johnny is here. We're like, Aunt right. Paula, are you serious? <laughs> that's not what he says. She goes, yeah, it definitely is. We're like, no, it's here's Johnny. <laughs> and we were all cracking up. Oh. Uh. Jeez, I remember looking at my mom, and when I I must have been watching with her, it was on cable, mm-hmm. or whatever, my mom was like, horror movies, 
And when I was a little kid, I can only have this memory is thinking that Danny running away and hiding in the snow, being like, oh, what's he going to do? He's like, that kid's really smart. And I don't, that's all I remember of that is me telling my mom I think the kid's smart. Yeah. I mean, hey. I wouldn't have work. done that. I would have died. Yeah, I would have probably, I would have ran into the maze and got lost. And I will say this, watching it this time, um, like him yelling, like him getting upset with Wendy out of nowhere and that being like clearly part of like him going insane and all this. I mean, like, I feel like I was like, oh man, I feel like I've gotten upset like that before we were randomly just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, hey, this is. Uh, when she walks in on him typing for the, like, the first time, he goes, get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, and the typewriter scene, I mean, the all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. Uh, Steven, Stanley Kubrick had his assistant type out Jesus every one of those Christ. pages. I can't even imagine. Um,. And that that's a creepy scene, too, because it's like, what has he been working on? And yeah. it's just, because he, because what I realized on this, I keep saying, what I realized on this watch, but is he literally loses his mind on his way up to the camp, mm -hmm. up to the, because that first scene, I mean, first, like, intro to them, he's eyes glazed over, they're mm -hmm. talking about the murder of that fan, the cannibal family, and, because he looks like every dad on a road trip where he's done with his wife and yeah. his kid. I mean, yeah, yeah. It like doesn't really register with him. Yeah, right? like, and I'm like, he just looks because I'm like, I hey, just you're frustrated. You've been a long drive. He looked bored. Yeah, like yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, and um, but yeah, I'm like, oh no, he started losing it the minute mm -hmm. he got there, and it just took like a month for that final pin to yeah. drop. Um, yeah, it. it, it it's it's a it's one of a it's it's really a one of a kind movie where, uh, you know I guess they kind of remade it with Doctor Sleep, but they did it so well in their own right in Doctor Sleep mm -hmm. that it works. Yeah, I like I said they remade it for miniseries, and it, I think it stunk. I never want to see this movie touched. Yeah, I think it's perfect the way it is. Um, Doctor Sleep being like a direct sequel to it was very good. Um, even my sister, who has read the books multiple times, said she loved the way, like, that they did Doctor Sleep. Um, well, yeah, that was such a fun movie as well, with Ewan McGregor as old Danny. Yeah, dude. Uh, I might give that a rewatch, uh, sometime this week, probably. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, might as well. Um, but, it's... I don't know what else you got to add to Shining. It, it's weird. There's, I feel like there's so much there, but at the same time, it like, story wise, it is as straightforward as you could be. Yeah, like you said, like the plot on Wikipedia is only one paragraph. Like it's weird. As like long as this movie is, it's condensed to like just a single like plot point of them being at the hotel for however many months. I, like I think I mean maybe like, maybe they had a little negative to it. I don't yeah. know. Like this is a five star movie. We're we're not rating the movies here. It's a five star movie. Um, I I think some of the things I I don't like are the cuts sometimes between Danny with Danny like reacting to what's going on mm -hmm. like from afar. That I was like, oh, that's fine, but yeah. that's it, <laughs> that's it, and they work. Um, yeah. Uh, the red rum scene. Stick, yeah. Rum. Especially when he's in the room with Shelly Duvall and like it just progressively gets higher pitch and higher pitch as he keeps screaming it. That scene fucked me up for a while too and then they pan out and it's murder in the mirror. So good. Oh. Rad Rob. Yeah. Um, Danny's a freak. Tony, it's so funny too that his, that his imaginary friend is Tony. Yeah, who lives in his stomach. It's Tony, it's Tony Soprano. <laughs> Gabagool. Gabagool. <laughs> Give me the deli meats. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Torrance. I need some gabagool. <laughs> no, um, another thing I, I noticed, I'm just looking at my notes, uh, he does at one point, when he gets to, when he gets to the Lloyd, the first and bartender, he says, I would sell my soul for a beer. Mm -hmm. And then he comes. So there's that, like, duality play there of, yeah. like, I don't know, it's, it's a very careful choice of words. Uh-huh. Um, so. Because, I mean, you, in Doctor Sleep, there was, like, supernatural elements involved with that movie so it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the entire world if yeah i mean like said time loop or whatever i mean stephen king's like always so supernatural mm -hmm. i 
never read one of his books, but I've heard enough people talk about them. Yeah. You know, or like where they're all like, oh, well, actually, this, there's five pages about just uh-huh. like us going into a black hole and, yeah. and, Very and finding Satan's like toenail. Yeah. Like, because he was coked up and drunk the whole time writing most of these things. Mm-hmm. Although, I, I have to be. do think this is truly just him working through his sobriety. Because um, I thought he had gotten divorced. But no, he's been married to the same woman mm-hmm. since like 1970. So, good for him. Uh, yeah, dude. I um, I mean, I think I've added everything I possibly can to kind of what I want to talk about The Shining. You or I you think, know? yeah, I pretty much said what I've needed to about it, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, horror in general is just so great because it encapsulates so many different genres of a movie that you can get and it's fantastic and now there's like comedy horror movies which oh, are fantastic some final of the best. girls so good tucker and dale i mean oh, they're, they're tucker and dale. they're some of the best mm-hmm. um yeah dude, i'm really excited to keep doing this podcast Hell and yeah. uh keep talking about horror and hopefully have you back on at some point always uh, so anyway, uh, where can the good people find you? Um, I mean, if, hey, I stream a little bit on Twitch. You can follow me there at twitch.tv backslash rumblerwar88, R-U-M-B-L-E-R-O-A-R, 88, drop a follow. Cool. You'll see me there. You can find me, uh, probably being in the control or talking about the Mets or movies on Twitter at chindango1, and you can find our other podcast, Flower State of Film on the main channel, on YouTube, and all podcast networks. Uh, Stay fearful. Thank you. Adios, amigos. Welcome to Flyover State of Fear.